bow, bow. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're to everybody in the Tri-State area, all the people who've been following us. I'm Perspective Radio. This is episode 20 or 20 or 21. We've been doing this back to back to back. Uh, we have yet another amazing episode today. We have a very, very special guest and we have only a short amount of our time, so I'm not going to talk much. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it is election day today when you're hearing this, so hopefully you got your vote out early. But we're going to talk about more of why that's important and what it looks like to come with our very special guest today. So without further ado, oh, I'm sorry, I, my name is Joe Rell, and let me introduce my co-host first. Yes, and my name is Nasi Alam. Uh, and you know, as of co-founders of I Am Perspective, we've definitely had the privilege of meeting some of this a few times, um, me more so personally than Jarrell, but it's always been amazing to have your support and we are really excited to support you in your journey. We're so proud of you um, and where, you've, where you are, right? So uh, really just let's talk about that. Um, what made you decide to run for office? what's behind your choice to run yeah well i wouldn't say it was like my choice necessarily it was people in the community and the movement space that i've been organizing with for the past few years that asked me to consider to do it so mm -hmm. i'm running in a race right now that is in the 15th congressional race i'm running for congress in the south bronx for those of you who don't know a lot about the South Bronx, it's everything that's along Fordham and below Fordham. Um, and Congress member Jose Serrano, who's been a Congress member here for the past three years, was diagnosed with Parkinson's. And because of that, he's stepping down. And there's going to be an election on June 23rd to replace him. So then he's actually one of the most left-leaning members of Congress. And he's one of the co-founders of the Medicare for All Caucus. And he has really strong positions on foreign policy, domestic policy. So it'd be a shame for that seat to go to someone who is middle of the road in terms of perspective and, you know, overall, you know, political philosophy and ideology. Mm -hmm. So then I used to work for him actually, and I learned a lot in terms of government and the inner workings of a congressional office. And I hope to build upon that experience and take it to Congress. And one of the most important features of my platform and what I've been saying on the campaign trail is that it's really important to center the direct lived experiences of people in the community as it relates to shaping policy and laws that will make our lives better. Because I think that very often policy is done from an ivory tower and it's done from a top down perspective. And it's really important to center people who have been formerly homeless, people who have suffered through hunger, people who have been through the criminal justice system, because who better than the community and people that have lived through the failures of government mm -hmm. to let us know how to improve it and take it to the next level. So in terms of my personal experiences, like I've faced homelessness myself because I grew up in the shelter system as my mother was a domestic violence survivor and you know she faced hunger like we faced hunger as a family like you know she had to go on welfare when my brother um was born and she's always someone who's worked very hard and before she ended up with the situation she worked as a seamstress at a sweatshop to make ends meet for us and there were often times where she didn't have money for a babysitter and she would pick me up from school and i would do my homework at the sweatshop um, so watching her go through everything that she went through and what I went through, um, which is definitely not unique at all to my family, many people in the congressional district that I'm running in have faced those issues. So I just think it's important to have people that have experienced that um, because that helps you continue to stay grounded in community. And it's something that won't allow you to forget where you come from and the importance of staying true to the community. Um, and out of respect to that, I decided to run on a platform of uh, housing for all, Medicare for all, child care for all, environmental justice, criminal justice reform, and taking big money out of politics. So I'm not accepting any real estate contributions or corporate PAC money to finance my campaign. I'm really happy that I've been endorsed by Bernie Sanders and Congresswoman Alexander Casar Cortez and the Democratic Socialists of America, New York Working Families Party, and a whole host of 
community-based grassroots organization throughout the country and the city. And it's humbling because I came from very humble, humble beginnings. Um, and, you know, I'm here now and it's a testament to you know, the fact that you should follow your values always and stay true to who you are and not forget where you come from and always, you know, fight for the underdog and fight for social justice and transformative politics. Um, so I don't know if that answers the question, but that's kind oh, of you definitely why I'm here. Very thorough. And why I decided to, to jump in after I was encouraged by people in my community and the movement space to jump in. Yeah. The race. No, thank you for sharing all that. Um, I also believe it's important to have someone from the community representing the community, right? So you have the best interests in mind. You mentioned um, that your predecessor, well, I'm already claiming that you're gonna get it. So that's how um, I'm speaking that. We gotta make a lot of calls before that. I mean, nothing is assured, <laughs> but we're definitely working really hard every day. Like we have like over a thousand volunteers like helping us make calls and like reach out to people and connect with voters. Nothing is assured. We got to work at it. But, you know, from here on out to Tuesday, like, that's what we're going to be doing. Yeah. What would be the impact or significance of being another woman of color, a Latina in the con in Congress? What do you think you're able to achieve? What would that what is that achievement? I think that, I mean, it would be great because people like AOC, Ilhan Omar, Yana Presley, Rashida Tlaib and, and other women of, of color, uh, black women um, especially, have really been putting their lives on the line for justice. So I think whenever you run for a position like this and when you put yourself out there publicly, especially if you're a black woman or uh, a brown woman, right, you face a lot of scrutiny. And because of that, there's, you know, it takes a, an emotional and psychological toll. So I think that it's really important to send reinforcements to, you know, the women right now in Congress and other levels of government and politics that are putting their lives and emotional well-being on the line for all of us. And this is what my race is about, you know, um, you know, lending that kind of support, being there for the community. I'm representing a district that is even though it's predominantly Latino, is not just Latino. It's uh, Black, it's, you know, Black American. Um, there's a lot of people from Africa, uh, from the African continent that are here. There's a lot of people that are Muslim, that are from Yemen, uh, that are from Palestine, that are from um, Bangladesh. So if you go to my website, you'll see that we prioritize language justice. And we've translated our website not only into Spanish, but French for the African uh, population that's here. It's in Bangla, it's in Arabic, it's in Spanish, and obviously English, because we want everybody to see themselves reflected in the platform. And I'm Puerto Rican and Dominican, and my mother's Afro-Dominican. So I am very proud that I would be the first Dominican woman of Afro-Caribbean heritage to ever, you know, have been a congresswoman if I were to be elected. And that's something that I think is important to the community, you know, having that perspective and having someone that can kind of like bridge, be a bridge and be a coalition builder and not just speak to one community, but speak to everybody. So that's what we hope to do in our campaign that we've been very intentional about. So I think it would be really special, you know, because um, this district has never been represented by a woman. Um, so I think that if the committee decides to go with me, you know, it'll be something historic. And that's, the, that's, in the that's amazing on a lot of fronts. Uh, a mm -hmm. first that you could be, you know, I, I know that's got to be somewhere in the back of your mind of like, oh my goodness gracious, you know, <laughs> so not just being in Congress, but, you know, really breaking barriers, continuing to break barriers. Mm -hmm. uh, you just said a lot. In, <clears throat> as far as uh, the races and the different parts of the diaspora, how much of, how much, uh, you know, reading your bio and meeting you in person, how much of your upbringing in the Bronx has affected you, what you, your, your, the way you stand and what you stand on? It's shaped everything that I've devoted my life to and uh, the lens through which I see the world and my commitment to social justice and the underdog and just staying true to my values in the community. 
I mean, a great example is that I am not an elected official. Like I, you know, have never like held office or anything like that or have that kind of power. But yet somehow our campaign was able to secure the endorsements of pretty much every progressive grassroots organization in the country and in the city. And they decided to go with us versus going with other elected officials that they've had relationships with for a reason, right? And I think it's because of my lived experiences and the fact that I've never wavered, even though I've had opportunities given to me, right, to mm -hmm. waver. And I think that people see that and they feel that this is a new political moment that we're in and that we need allies in places of, of, um, of politics and Congress and, you know, other uh, positions like city council where the movement space can feel like they have an ally that they can trust in those roles to basically follow up on any legislation that they present to the elected official and entrusting the elected official with seeing it through and keeping them abreast of what's going on um, with it. You know, something that happened with one of the city council members I'm running against is that he actually um, he disrespected the criminal justice reform community because they gave him a piece of legislation called the Right to Know Act. Um, and he basically like watered it down significantly, but then he's claiming that he's a progressive, right? So there's a lot of corporate Democrats that are running in my race that want to claim that they're progressive and left leaning, but then they've done a lot of things behind the scenes in their tenure that has basically like gone against the values of the community and the activist base. And you know, there's one particular person, his name is Ruben Diaz Sr., who's a homophobe. He's anti-choice, he's like anti-LGBTQIA. He's been noted on record for saying really disparaging things about LGBTQIA community. Um, and that's one thing, right? And rightly so, I mean, everybody like has a problem with that. I mean, universally, it's obvious that that is a problem. But then you have corporate Democrats that are claiming to be progressives that are taking a lot of cop money, that are voting to increase the cops that we see on the streets, mm -hmm. that have voted for $11 billion to be invested in the building of four new jails in the community in New York City as a whole, instead of using that money to defund the police, to demilitarize the police and take some of that funding to reinvest in the community in terms of um, reparations for the black community, housing justice, um, more investments in NYCHA, so these are what these so quote unquote progressive self proclaimed progressive corporate Democrats, you know, have been doing behind the scenes, which is very similar to what this anti choice anti LGBTQIA, um, you know, person I just mentioned Ruben Diaz senior is doing outwardly. So I've been saying, you know, a lot in interviews that it's actually more dangerous to have people that claim to be progressive doing these things behind the scenes because you don't see it coming. Whereas with somebody like Ruben Diaz Sr., as problematic as he is universally, like we all know that, at least like you see it coming. So I lumped them all together. And this is the race that I'm running in. There's 15 people running in my race right now. And I'm, you know, like the grassroots alternative. And right now um, we're trying to raise resources to spread our message in the community. We're fighting for housing for all, uh, healthcare for all, childcare for all. Like I said earlier, like environmental justice, criminal justice reform, I'm not taking a dime of real estate money to do it. So this is like, you know, what's at hand. It's really about life and death. And it's a referendum on the history and the legacy of the South Bronx's revolutionary spirit. And it's something that I have been honoring since I entered this race. And if I were to win, I want to keep honoring that and take it to the next level. Yeah, I, I, go ahead, Nancy. No, I'll go ahead. You could go. <laughs> uh, just off the off of what you just said, I know you mentioned it twice now. Why why is it important for you to not be taking the large funds? Yeah, it's really important because when you take that kind of money, then you are selling out the community in a sense. You're not going to be as forceful and as independent with your advocacy, and you know it's not going to give you the more on political courage and independence to stand up to oppressive funding sources like the real estate developer industry, like, you know, the prison industrial complex. Like if you're taking a lot of money from cop unions, for instance, that's gonna 
limit your ability to be vocal about criminal justice reform and decarceration and the demilitarization of you know the police so that's the connection I'm what other challenges would you say um you know as a child of someone who's been active in the political world um i've had the experience of you know noticing some things and you know it really politics still is at the end of the day a white man's world right even in new york even where this is a diverse um city diverse state but at the end of the day, there's still certain people that are running politics. Um, what would you say, like, are some specific challenges that you would have um, that you, or that you're even facing right now, maybe not forget, you know, being elected, but that you're facing right now because of the people like, you know, who these corporate Democrats are, the people who are running the show behind the scenes? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think for someone like me, um, a formerly homeless Latina woman, um, I think that the pundits and the corporate elite and the political elite are definitely trying to minimize our campaign um, and erase my campaign from the conversation. Um, that's why it's really important for anyone listening out there to support independent media. Um, because independent media throughout this campaign has given me such an amazing platform to talk about what we're fighting for, what we stand for. Um, but we definitely, as people of color, women of color, like we need that, those independent outlets that tell our stories. Because even the progressive independent media outlets, um, you know, a lot of them tend to be dominated by the white male progressive space. So it's really important to have people like you, um, you know, you know, to be out there covering our stories because who better than us to tell our stories and cover the nuances and showcase our experiences with pride. So I've experienced that. Um, and just general, generally like just people underestimating me and my chances um, because of my background, because I didn't come from a political family, because I haven't raised like a million dollars. Um, you know, like people definitely make assumptions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely we've, not hear we've that. Been, uh, we've been watching the new wave of <clears throat> society. I can't even say, you know, we, we use the term wave of uh, this is the new thing. But there are a lot of people who are focusing on issues that they weren't focusing on. I think we've always played the game of politics, we meaning uh, people, regular society. But the thing you mentioned a lot throughout this interview thus far is having somebody that you know from this kind of grassroots idea uh there, there's a lot of distrust between people citizens and politicians because mm -hmm. of the things that you mentioned especially within even the the party that you align with you know you have somebody representing your party but really they're taking money here and all that and it, it it's just this massive distrust so it's beautiful to see you coming coming from the bronx coming from the neighborhood from the people it's, it's amazing for us because we've been We've seen you, you've come to an Iron Perspective event, you've come to a couple of Iron Perspective events, and this was before mm -hmm. politics or anything. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people get into politics and then they start showing up to uh, community stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it speaks volumes of who you are that, you know, we met you out in the world and then now we turn around and like, oh my God, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a real person, you know, um, right, right. and I, I'm not perfect and I won't lie to you all, like electoral politics is not perfect either and it's not the end all and be all. I think that the most important thing is activism and organizing in terms of uh, effectuating a change and having allies, right, in the political space that can meet the movement space. So having politics meet the movement space and having a sense of co-governance where we can kind of like partner in some way uh, to get the transformational change done in our communities in the way that reflects our experiences and our values. Um, and there's examples of that already because New York State ended up getting one of the most uh, progressive pro-tenant rent reforms um, back in 2019 because the housing justice movement space really organized and connected with, um, you know, people like the downstate people in New York City connected with the upstate uh, people in Albany and like New York City, uh, New Yorkers working with people from Albany and Binghamton mm -hmm. to figure out ways that they can work together to fight for pro-tenant uh, rent reforms. And, you know, you had these new insurgents that took out these Democrats that were empowering Republicans to stay in control in Albany 
And then when that was removed, then you have these new grassroots like political insurgents team up with the housing justice movement. And that was an example of the politics meeting the movement space in terms of housing justice. And because of that, like we ended up getting these amazing uh, tenant rent reforms that we wouldn't have gotten had that old structure been allowed to continue. So, you know, you have to disrupt the system. And sometimes that means that you have to take people out that are standing in the way of progress and organize against um, regression. So that's what we saw happen in 2019. Um, and historically, that's what we saw happen with the civil rights movement, with the farm worker mm -hmm. movement, with Cesar Chavez, um, you know, and things like that. So it's always, you know, the movement, people on the ground when there's unrest. And what's happening right now nationally with the state sanctioned murder of George Floyd. Um, and that's why we need to, you know, definitely take on criminal justice reform and make sure that we, we demilitarize and defund police departments across America so that we can invest in these social services to prevent the root causes of poverty and prevent people from ending up in the system to begin with. Um, so that's something that is rooted in my experience and what I've seen people in my community go through. So, you know, at our perspective, um, something that we do is share our experiences with the intention of others understanding where we're coming from. And, you know, you've been in some a few of our I am perspective events. Um, what's something that we really want people to understand about you and what it's really like to run for office? Something you know that people may not consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's very lonely. It's very difficult. Um, there's highs and there's lows. And I think that if you're thinking about doing something like this, you have to surround yourself with an amazing group of people that are going to be there with you through thick and thin no matter what because like i said like sometimes there are good days sometimes there's bad days um and you know you just got to center yourself and remember who you are remember why you're doing this when it gets hard um you know and i would say that like surround yourself with a core group of people that are going to have your back um because as great as it is like what motivates me is not necessarily because i've been going on like a lot of press interviews and things like that and like the national media is interested in covering like this race and this campaign and that's cool but i feel that the most important thing is those connections that you can make with voters and you know the possibility of you know working coalition to make a difference and that's really what excites me like if i were to win this election you know, what will come after and like working with people, like being proactive, like reaching out to people in the community, getting their perspectives, getting their vision as to what they want to see for their future and channeling that energy and that creativity into policy and advocacy that really speaks to people that haven't been seen or heard, right, and have been marginalized. So that really excites me. Um, but yeah, you know, like I said earlier, like people have tried to marginalize our campaign and, and dismiss us. So that's definitely uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. And raising money is incredibly difficult for a working class, you know, uh, women uh, is very difficult for black women, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult brown women. So, you know, like a lot of the elected officials that are running here, for instance, in my race, you know, they have their salaries, their six figure salaries, you know, they don't have to worry about, you know, paying the rent, they don't have to worry about like, you know, getting health care and things like that. Like, I've had to let all of that go. Like, I left my job, I, you know, ended up running without health care. Mm -hmm. And those are things that occupy a lot of mental and emotional space. So I would say, you know, prepare for that. And at the same time, like we need to re-envision our political system to make it possible for regular working class people to be able to run. Like if you're gonna run for office and you know you have to quit your job, like you should have some kind of a stipend for instance. You should have access to childcare if you're a mom or a dad. You know, you should have like access to healthcare so that you won't have to worry about that if something happens to you on the campaign trail. And our system right now um, is not set up for that, for working people at all. Like it's actually set up for wealthy people and people that have connections to big money, to the corporate elite, to lobbyists. And that's just how the system perpetuates itself over and over. So it needs to be a disruption um, and creating a change where regular working class people can run for office at all levels of government. 
Um, you, you've said so much, and we know, again, we only have you for a short amount of time. Yeah. And of all the things that you filled in there, we at Iron Perspective, because we know you, we want to ask this very important question mm -hmm. of how are you doing? <laughs> to, um, end, to end the interview, you know, uh, we could have yeah. this whole crazy, uh, what are your plans and all that, but like yeah. during all of this stuff, how is your mental health like taking on the world yeah. and taking mm. on this process? Yeah, no, like I said, there's a lot of highs and lows, but overall, I mean, it's been amazing because of the people that I've surrounded myself with, the people that are part of my team that speak life into me when things get hard. Um, one of the things I love, love, love doing that definitely helps lift my mood when I've had a difficult day is biking. Like I, I bike a lot. That's how I get around in the community. And I like biking on greenways because, you know, even like seeing trees and green space is really good for your mental health. Yes, yes. So, There's a, there are a lot of people out biking now, mm, a lot more people. Yeah, so I've always been a biker. I've been biking for like 15 years. Oh, amazing. So this is how I, I get around. And when I have a difficult day, I was like, okay, I just need to like let this go and I'm going to get on my bike ride and I'm just going to like bike and bike and bike. Um, and, you know, that definitely helps me recenter myself. And I come back and do what I need to do. Yeah, <clears throat> which we're glad but that you're doing all that you're I'm doing. I'm doing okay. I'm happy. You have yes, that's what your yes, question yes. is. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> and I'm very proud of the campaign that I've run. Um, I'm very proud that I've run a campaign that has been values driven. And I'm really happy that my campaign leads with love and compassion and that I center the values that I live in my campaign. You know, like I'm the same person, like in the campaign and outside of the campaign. Does that make sense? Totally. It doesn't make sense in this world, it seems like, <laughs> in, in, the, in the country where people are different things. Uh, so we, we're definitely excited mm -hmm. to have you be you. And, and that's what we need. We need more people that we can relate to who are actually themselves in politics and representing the communities as themselves. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for this courageous yeah. journey that you're on. You know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. this is kind of an unsung hero journey to go on this, and especially as you're saying, and raising all the money and making the mm -hmm. calls and everything like that. And we're very proud of you at our perspective because you are extending. Thank you. And we're gonna, we're, we're Thank you so our, much. Surely. And you, you definitely have our full support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very happy to see your journey. Can't wait to see you in Congress. <laughs> yeah, well, sign up for some calls. You can find us at lopezforthepeople.com. Um, right now, we're checking up on voters um, and just making sure that, like, we reach out to everybody that we can uh, between now and election day. And you can find us at lopezforthepeople.com. Okay. Okay. All right. I think we all have a good, good night. All right. Thank you so much, Melissa Lopez, for Congress. We'll speak with you soon. Okay, bye. 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 Thank you. All right. Of course, it has, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I can't even hear. I don't know what just happened. I'm going to call. Well, what happened?